am Allie. Join me as I show you how to do a right angle weave, multiple rows, and we're also gonna make it into a little envelope bag called an amulet bag. If you need any materials, go ahead and look below the video. If you are a box subscriber, this is one of your kits this month. Gather up all your materials and let's get ready to get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is build the base of our bag. And what that means is that we're gonna do multiple rows of right angle weave, and we are going to do it nine right angle weave units using two drop right angle weave wide for our little amulet bag. I have a couple colors here of 11 O's and some bugles to connect the rows. We are gonna begin with starting out with four sides of our right angle weave. We're gonna be doing two drop, meaning we have two beads that go to each side. So there's one side, two side, three sides, and four sides of my square. I'm letting those all drop down on my thread, which I'm using dragon thread in the gray color, and I have a stop bead on my project. You're gonna want at least five feet of thread for this, but you're going to need to add more in addition to that. To start the right angle weave, we are going to go back through beads one and two, that's one side, three and four, two sides, and five and six, exiting before bead number seven. When we pull that tight, that gets our first little right angle weave unit. You'll notice that the thread is coming out toward the bottom of the right angle unit. We're gonna add two more beads for the bottom of the next right angle unit, two beads for the right side, and two beads for the top of our next little box that we're building. Our thread is currently coming out the rightmost beads from the previous box. We're gonna take our needle and thread after adding six more and go down through those two rightmost beads or the right side of our last right angle unit. It's called right angle because you're making a series of four right angles. In this case here, it's equal sides, so we're making a box. Once you come out of that, those beads that were the right hand side of the first box, you'll notice they become the left hand side of your second box. We need to get over to the right hand side of, the, of this current box that we're on so we're gonna sew through our bottom two beads, and then we're gonna sew through that rightmost side of our box, through the two beads that are on the right. Every time you're doing right angle weave here, you are going to want your thread to come out of the two beads that are the right hand side of the box. So as we do our next one, we have two now that are gonna be the top, two that are the new right for the new box, and two that are gonna be the bottom. Sewing into the bottom of the right side of box number two that we completed. We add those six beads on. We're gonna sew through the two top beads. And then once again, we're gonna come down and exit the two beads on the right. You'll notice the first time my thread was coming out the bottom. The second box, the thread was coming out the top. And here it is coming out the bottom again. We're gonna add once again, one, two, three, four, five, six beads, two for each side. My thread's coming out that right-hand side of box number three. I'm gonna sew into the top of that right-hand side of box number three. That creates my next right angle unit, number four, and I need to get again to the right side so we continue on to make another fifth box. Going through the bottom there, and then once again, always coming out the right hand side of the box that you just completed. You don't want the needle coming out the bottom or the top, you want it coming out of those two beads. I'm gonna continue on until I get nine right angle weave units or nine of my boxes. Once you're done your nine initial rows, and if you wanna make a bigger amulet bag, you can go, or wider amulet bag, you can go more rows. I'm gonna go up and start my second row, and then we're gonna continue with this same technique over and over and over again as we build more and more rows. If you're not into the amulet bag, you can always make a nice bracelet with that right angle weave and just grab a clasp from your collection. As you come out the last right angle unit here, you'll notice I'm out the right hand side. However, this time we don't wanna to build to the right, we wanna build up. We're gonna call this our first floor, we wanna build our second floor and we have columns here for each of our rows. So I'm gonna build my next floor by going through the top of the last unit that I created and exiting. Coming out the top here, you'll notice that the top of these right angle unit rows are gonna become the bottom 
of the next floor that sits on top. So floor number two will sit right on top of floor number one. We're gonna use our bugles this time on our sides and we're gonna to switch to our bronze beads for our top. Bugle also for the other side. So I'm coming out the top there of the last unit. I've added a bugle for the left, seed beads for the right, bugle for the, sorry, seed beads for the top, bugle for the right. I'm gonna sew back through that top of the right angle weave box that I'm coming out of, and you can see we've created another right angle unit. I'm gonna flip this, because I like to always think of it as me exiting the right side of my right angle unit. From here, I want to go up through the bugle, and I'm exiting, once again, the right side of this right angle unit. Give a nice tight pull, and now we're gonna make our next right angle unit. It's gonna sit right on top of column two. So we are gonna add two beads for the top of our next right angle unit. We're gonna add another bugle for the right side, and then the bottom is already there. So we're gonna sew through the two beads from row number one, and then while we're there, we're going to sew through the bead that our thread is currently coming out of, which is the right hand side of that right angle unit. Just like before, my thread's coming out between those two units, I need to get so I'm coming out the right hand side. Coming out the right hand side then of that unit that I just built, my thread is going to exit through one of the bugle beads. Now I don't need to add any beads for the bottom, I'm going to connect from the column three below. So I'm going to go through those two beads from the right angle unit below as we start our second floor of column three. Add a bugle bead for the right and C beads for the top. Come down through the rightmost bead of that right angle unit from the previous one. And once again then, sew over so you're coming out the right hand bead. That means I'm gonna sew through the bottom of this one. And then I'm gonna sew up through the right hand side. We're gonna continue on adding our units. And each time we finish a row, we are going to add it just like we did previously. So rows three, four, five, and so on are gonna continue just like we did rows one and row two. Coming out the rightmost side and adding beads for the top and the right side connecting to the floor below it. My next row that I do is going to connect to the two beads from row number two. So floor three is going to use the top of floor two, just like we did between rows one and two. When you have approximately 19 rows, we're gonna to start to downgrade our right angle weave. What I mean by that is we are going to start to taper it on the ends. So we have nine units. This next one we're going to have seven units. The one after that five, then three, then one unit. That creates the top of our bag. So coming out of our last right angle weave unit here, I'm going to go in and go through that top bead, like I'm gonna add my next row, and instead what I'm gonna do is go down through the right angle weave, around that right angle weave circle, up through the top here, along the side, and exit. So I'm basically going to not do the first unit and the last unit of the right angle weave. You can see what I've done for my pattern is just pretty much random. And I've done a random pattern where I've just created my 11 inch seed beads, but I'm always using my bugles in between each. When it comes to the fold over portion, you can choose to use the bugles or not. I'm gonna use the bugles. And then for this row, I'll go ahead and do my lighter yellow color since I haven't used those in a while. Two of those go on. One more of my bugle goes on. And then I'm just going through and concentrating on that second right angle row. So that extra one is gonna be hanging out there along the side. Just like we've been doing them, we are gonna go through all the way to the end, completing this row here. And then once again into the next right angle unit. As you finish row number seven, stop and go to your next row. Complete this yellow and do five. After that, you're gonna do three 
and then again taper down to one. Here I am creating this first taper row where I've done the smaller seven blocks. And instead of going to the left and then up just like I've been doing, what I'm gonna do is go back through this one, not adding in an extra row there on top and just stepping in once. Then going in here, creating this row of right angle weave and again, just doing five. So it gets smaller and smaller as we get the top point of our envelope. As you finish up your triangle section of that seven, five, three, one, you can see that you basically have the open template. This is the shape to complete our bag. Now, how we're doing our amulet bag is we are going to take the bottom section of our right angle weave and we are going to fold it to the top. And you can see that this will fold over to complete the little bag. How are we gonna seam up the sides? We're gonna do a right, right angle weave row. So you're gonna take row number one and you are going to connect it up here to your second to last row of where you did your uh, downgrade. So however many rows you did long, you can see here's my last row of nine, second to last row of nine, third row of nine. That's where we are going to connect these two rows together. Now my needle and thread is right here at the top and we're going to exaggerate the fact that this is a V. The way we're going to exaggerate that this is a V is we're going to add an embellish sum. I'm gonna leave that there and leave this extra thread that I have at the end. I'm gonna get a new piece of thread, attach it to my starter thread, and then get ready to start right there at the top before I go through and embellish the sides. And then I'm gonna take some daggers and hang them as fringe from the bottom. What we're going to do now is connect row number one to row number 17 which again is your third row there of your completed nine right angle units. We're going to do right angle weave along the side as well while we go in and basically connect the blocks. So I'm coming out of the side of number one block that we did. I'm gonna bring my needle and thread out. So I'm coming out the very side of it. And as you come out that side two beads, you're gonna add one, two, and three beads. This unit number one right side is going to connect to unit number 17 right side or left side. Three beads go on. I'm gonna sew up through the beads on row 17 and bring my needle and thread out. As I do that, coming out the top, I'm gonna to add, you guessed it, one, two, and three more of my 11s and then I'm going to once again sew back down through those two beads on the right hand side of row number one. I'm going to pull slowly so you can see how that becomes its own right angle unit. As that becomes its own right angle unit basically what you're learning is how to connect the dots here. If you want the bag to not have as big of openings, you can certainly min minimize, excuse me, the opening space. From here, I'm kind of turning the project to the side. I'm gonna treat this as a right angle weave unit. So I'm grabbing and going out the right hand side. You can see the top of the unit is already there. It's from the back or from row number 16. And the bottom is from row number two. So I'm gonna go through the row number 16 bead that's on the right side. I'm gonna add one, two, three beads. And then I'm gonna go, oops, doesn't want me to add those. And then I'm gonna go back to row number two and sew up through the sidemost bead of row number two. So see how that's basically just getting pinched. And all we're doing is connecting and creating additional right angle weave row blocks on the side. So right angle weave is amazing. And the reason we're doing this amulet bag, especially for the subscription kit, is to show you how you can use these skills in all different forms of jewelry. You can see that it could have been, if you wanted to, a bracelet, it could be a pair of earrings. You've learned how to cinch and to make it smaller as well. Going through the top here then, and sewing around the right angle unit, we're going to our next section here, which is row 15 and row number three. I'm going to change to the side just to make it easier to sew through the two beads from row the side of row number three. Add 
three more beats of your 11s and sew through the side of row 15. Circle back around that right angle unit and then get your needle and thread down to those three C beads that you just added. By this time with the right angle weave, after doing all of these rows and doing the downgrade two of creating our V for our little envelope, amulet bag here, you should be good to see how to continue. So you're going down here then picking up the side bead from the back, picking up three C beads, picking up the side bead from the front, and then continuing to spin around with your thread and needle going through the last top ladder row there and come on down. As you get to the very bottom here, when they line up, you should have one row of your right angle weave right along this side that's going to be equal with your little bag here. We're going to add some fringe and then we're going to seam up the right hand side as well. As you finish up these little ladder rungs almost of right angle weave along this side, it's going to taper ever so slightly because that bottom unit, which we are going to sew through all of the beads because they're there, we're not adding any, is going to taper down just ever so slightly. So I'm sewing through that whole last right angle weave unit, connecting that group of three to the bugle, two, bugle. I'm going to come out through the bugle bead there along the bottom, and we are going to sew through so we're coming out the corner of the bag. When you flip it over, you can see one side, it almost looks like that little Barbie bag. One side is done. This one's gonna go on top here, and we're gonna seam the other side. But while we're at the bottom, we're gonna do a little embellishment. So here along the bottom, we are going to embellish with some of our drops here. You don't have to embellish, it's completely up to you. But while you are coming out of that rightmost bead, what we are going to do is pick up one, two, and three of our 11 OC beats. We're going to pick up one of our daggers and then one, two, and three of our 11 O's. We're coming out the rightmost side here. We are going to go into the bottom of that right angle unit, the left side. That's just going to hang those little drops down as a little embellishment. Now as I go, we know that we have nine units that we can decorate here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The first one here, we did three beads and we did them with the bronze. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do four beads. And we can do that with our lighter yellow if we want to and then we'll bring in some of our purple as well. What this is gonna do is create a little bit of a cascade of those nine daggers that we're gonna build up and build down. So four go into this one. Then we have our dagger, and then once again, one, two, three, four. We're gonna count up a total of five times, and then we go back to counting down. You can see I went into the opposite corner, and that just holds and creates that little fringe there along the bottom of the bag. I'm gonna continue then with five beads, then six beads, then seven, then six, five, four, and three, down on each side, rotating exactly which color I do as my loops of my fringe. After decorating the bottom with those little loops of your daggers, it's time to go up the opposite side. As we go up the opposite side then, we are going to continue with that right angle weave just like we did here, flipping over, going in and adding our rows of our yellow, those beautiful AB honey beads as we go up. After you finish your side, you can see that your bag is actually completed. Super cool how you can use right angle weave and just make a little modifications and make your own little bag. What we're gonna do is now really decorate and have fun and add a little bit of weight to the flap so that way it stays down. When you finish doing your second side of your right angle weave, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some round beads and we are going to embellish the sides, kind of closing them up. So just like we did along the bottom, our thread's coming out the top of that basically letter row number one, I'm gonna go through the bottom and add that bead. Add another round, go through the bottom of the next row. Just gonna add a little jazz alongside. You could do crystals too if you wanted it to be a little bit more flashy. 
and you're just going in and adding those beads. Once I get to the bottom, I'm gonna go the whole way over to the other side and do the same thing, just weaving through my right angle weave. Then we're gonna grab, remember we have that extra thread here at the top, and start embellishing that top little envelope fold over. Now that both sides of my bag and the bottom fringe are done, I'm going to switch to working on my little fold over here. I need some weight so it stays down, and luckily we have some fun beads to use for that weight. We're gonna use a dagger here, one, two, and three, right here at the bottom to do the little flap, and then we're gonna use some of the rounds on the sides of the right angle. So I'm coming out through, let me get the end of my needle and thread, and we're coming out through right here, that top section. What we wanna do first is our loop. So we are going to go in here and we are going to grab our, let's do bronze color. Color doesn't really matter for this. Again, the best thing is that you're learning the foundations of how right angle weave can become multi-dimensional and creating a cool bag in the process. Go ahead and put on two of your 11 O's, then one, two, and three of your daggers. one and two more 11 O's, and then go back through the two beads that your thread are currently coming out of at the top there. Now, since this is gonna get a little bit of wear and tear here, because this is where you're gonna open and close your bag, go ahead and reinforce going back through that one more time. Through the 11s, also pull nice and tight through your daggers. And I like stacking these up like this because they will sit almost like a fan for this amulet bag go down through the daggers on the other side, and then once again, through those two beads to circle it up. Right away already, that has some additional weight and it's starting to hang down in front of your bag. What we're gonna do now is we are going to go up the sides and add in some of our round beads. So coming out, basically, we're going to catch on to the rightmost side of each bead. We are going to add an additional purple bead, a black bead, an additional purple, and then we're gonna jump down to the next row, rightmost bead. So in this case, it's a bugle. And that's just gonna make this appear like it is going into a V shape. Coming out then, what we are going to do is we are going to add a little bit more. We are going to go in here, so out to the corner, going through the two beads that sit on the side there of that right angle weave. And once again, we're gonna do the same thing. Purple bead, drop bead, purple bead. Go over to the next bugle and sew down through that bugle. You can see that adds that little step and a little bit of weight. We're gonna do this one more time, but we're gonna do it in the opposite direction. Going through those two beads that sit at the next right angle weave and now we're going to connect. So again, this is all about right angle weave as building blocks. From here, once again, purple, black bead, purple. And now this time I want you to sew into the purple, black bead, purple that are already there. See how that V is starting to happen? Coming out there, you're gonna do the same thing. Purple, black bead, purple, into the purple, black bead that's already there. We're gonna do the same thing now on the other side. So we're gonna sneak over to the other side, going through again those two beads right there at the drop. And now turning over to the side here, same thing. Purple, black bead, purple. Go through your next one of your bugle beads. Same thing here, scoot through the top of the yellow, two beads and come on out. It's exciting that this is the end as well because I know you guys have been working on this for a while. Going down then through your next bugle and out through your purple row. As you come out the two beads on your purple row there, one and two, Exit and add your last couple beads on the side. That will then take our thread and needle towards the middle of our project 
and all we have to do is get ready to tie it off. Now that we have our sides done, the last thing we're gonna do is go back once again through those center two beads. We're gonna add one more round that sits right above those beads here. We're gonna add a seed bead, our round bead, and a seed bead. And we're gonna go through those same two beads one last time. That's just going to sit these round beads right in front of our daggers. I'm trying to get my thread out of my pliers. All right, there we go, ready? Sits right in front there, and look, your amulet bag is complete. It's really cute to know how this right angle weave works, to see your bag and to see how it works as well. If you want to, you can add some additional weight, but what we're gonna do is just connect some thread and needle to the sides. Ding, 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 thread and needle is already connected to the side. I'm just gonna make a long rope basically out of my remaining beads that if you want to, you can wear your amulet bag. So coming out the amulet bag here, I'm attaching just to that yellow section and I'm just doing a small strap that you can put in your car, hang from your rear view mirror, whatever you wanna do. So I have just a series of 10 beads and then a bugle in different colors. I've used one of my uh, black, round beads and I'm going to go into the opposite side now through those same three beads. As I do so, my strap comes down. I'm going to add an additional 10 beads of my bronze color to match the other side. There's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm going to reinforce this strap going up through the black bead and all the way around to the opposite side doing the same thing. So you can see that little V there. You could make this long into a necklace again if you want to. You could put a little um, pad in there with some essential oils and hang it. Lots and lots of things to do and just showing you that beads can be more than just jewelry. They can be decor, they can be functional, all of that good stuff. So I'm gonna take my needle and thread the whole way to the other side and do that little V coming off the other side as well, almost continuing that right angle weave look. Once I get there then, I'm gonna tie off my thread ends to complete my amulet bag. Once you're through the amulet bag and you have your little straps on the side, you're just gonna take those two thread ends, the one that started with your round beads or ended with your round beads, I should say, and I brought them back towards the back of the design so you don't see it. And I'm just tying them into a knot. You can, if you want to, decorate however you want. You can make it the most bling bag ever. And you're just gonna take your thread burner then burn down your thread ends and as you burn down your thread ends you're going to burn these down all along the project if you have any connection points and your amulet bag is nice and finished. This is a really cute idea too for grandchildren for tooth fairy bags. Again essential oils, little trinkets and things that you want to keep inside as well. And now you know how to make Barbie purses. Thanks so much for joining me and learning how to make these cute little amulet bags. They're really fun and really, really great to learn the techniques and the foundation of using right angle weave, making something like a little pocket bag, how to seam up the sides, add additional rows, add some uh, netting, add some fringe, and like I said, you can make your own Barbie bag. I can't wait to see everybody's amulet bags in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. Remember, if you haven't yet subscribed to the Potomac Beads Best Bead Box, this is an amazing month to get the kit, complete with three different designs. Click on the link below in the descriptions to get a link back to our website to check that out. Thanks so much for watching everybody and have fun creating your amulet bags. Stay tuned for more inspirational videos.